Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad, and in this video, I'm taking a look at some brand new map making software for Seven Days to Die. I'll show you some examples of what it can do, some behind the scenes screenshots, some video of the software in action, and I've even got an estimated release date. Oh yes. <laughs> It's the 1st of February 2022 and we are long overdue an updated version of King Gen which sadly has fallen by the wayside and it doesn't appear to be going to receive an update. However, is there a new king on the horizon? The software is called Terragon and it's been developed by Pilly. Well, like me, I'm sure you've got a lot of questions as to what the app can do. So I'm going to answer a few of these before we get started and during the video. And I'll keep you up to date on any news as I get it in future videos. Make sure you subscribe. First off, does it work with Alpha 20? Well, it absolutely does. Development started on Terragon over nine months ago, and it's been programmed to work with Alpha 20. Of course it has. Does it work with tiles? Yes, tiles are fully supported, being automatically placed and POIs correctly inserted within the tiles. So yes, this means you get the fancy new roads and sewer systems. Does it support custom height maps? It does indeed. As well as generating a height map for you, you also have the option to use your own. What about biome maps? Yes, import your own or let the software do it for you. More on that in a moment. There are lots more things to ask, but let's get started with some images showing you some of the features of this software. There are a lot of things I'm excited about with the software, but something that I'm finding particularly interesting is the erosion system. Billy has explained that this will be an option when building the map, as the erosion system does add a little extra processing time, but the results do look really beautiful. Here's an early test picture simulating the effects of wear on the mountains in Monument Valley. And here's a before and after showing you the difference between the erosion system being on and off. And you can see that the mountain has slowly softened at the bottom, which gives it a very natural look. And we can see that here nicely, the snow slowly just sweeping up to the side of the hill, which is how it would be in real life over time. So here you can see how it adds an extremely natural look to the mountains, particularly in the snow where you can see the ledges and paths cutting through the rocks, perhaps where they've been eroded by rivers over the years. You can see a little path going up the side here and a ledge, possibly somewhere to build a little base out of the way and maybe even another path through to the top of the mountain. In this photograph here, you can see the same thing where the rivers might have carved through the rocks and it's left the snow on the lower areas. I think it looks fantastic. Another beautiful picture here with the city on the right hand side there, but look at that river system that's cutting through the landscape. You can see it's following the lowest point on the ground, curving round as a river would do in real life and heading off into the distance into the valley there. Here's a higher perspective of the river and you can see better that it's following the shape of the terrain as it weaves through into the valley round the back of this peaked area and continues on. Also, we get to see the lakes that are formed, again, following the shape of the terrain, as opposed to the simple round ones we see in Alpha 20 Random Gen. Another picture of the river system, you can see it following through the mountains there, with the path being cut through and round the side of this one and on its journey. But also something else that I'll come back to in a moment. If you notice the biome change, we've got snow on the bottom and as it goes up the hill at a different height, it's a different biome. Mm. So rivers are drawn by the software or you can import your own, uh, but random generated rivers will follow the shape of the terrain, which will make them look very realistic. Roads are currently being developed. City roads are a different thing with them being baked into the tiles already, but the roads joining cities and towns in random gen are drawn to also follow the terrain and even follow the sides of rivers, as you can see in this picture here. So the green line here being the road, and you can see where it crosses a river. It's a straight line that goes straight through the river, continues around following the terrain along the side of the river, and then straight through again, and again down here. So where it's crossing the river, it's going through at a straight 90 degrees, or zero degrees, or 180 degrees if you like, and there will hopefully be a bridge system that's automatically generated here. We can see from this picture here that Pili is working on a system where when the terrain comes down to a particular height above the riverbed or the 
top of the water at least, it will then cut across horizontally and start again with the road on the other side, placing a bridge in between. I really like the bridges in Navasgain, so if we get something similar to that in Terragon, I think that will be great. So let's take a look at the actual software screen here, where you can see a map being created. Let's have a quick look around the options we've got across the top here before we look at what's actually happening there. You can see that we have a basic option to start with. So I assume that's just like your Alpha 20 random world gen where you tell it the size and it just gets on with it. Then you have the more advanced settings where perhaps you can specify larger or smaller towns or cities, what sort of textured terrain you want, whether you want it more hilly, more mountainous. And then we're into the expert settings, which you can see here. And there's a list of commands here. I'll show you a larger list of those commands in just a moment and if you notice here that there's an arrow saying to it what it looks like to add those commands to a queue so it runs through these things that you choose so you could specify whether you want to add creators using this system or create rivers and so on or not or remove them if you've added them by mistake so I'll quickly run through some of these commands here, at least the ones that I have a rough idea of exactly what they are. Um, set game data, so your basic settings that you may have made early on, for example, the size of the world, perhaps. And then we've got the flat height map, so the basic terrain, the starting point, then the noise height map, which has been created, which is where these mountains will start to form. These are all random gen mountains using uh, noise formulas. And then we've got a filter for Gaussian height. Now, Gaussian usually refers to um, a, a blurring or softening. So that's perhaps been used to um, soften the texture from the side of the hills into the flat terrain. So here's one of the erosion filters that's been added and it's a rain erosion effect. So it'd be similar to washing down some of the mountain areas so that they start to run off the sides and create that lovely sloped edge to them. And then again, a Gaussian blur has been applied to that. Then the towns have been created and you can see the tiles there. And in the picture here, you can see one of the POIs has been highlighted in the tile. And it even shows you the preview if it's available for the particular uh, POI that it is and the name and the coordinates. Then it moves on to the biome map and has updated the preview. And this is where this image would have appeared here. Then the height map has been exported and the list of POIs has also been exported. Okay, let's move on to another picture which shows this a little bit further on or a similar map further on. So this is quite complicated looking at the moment, but again, just to stress that this is the expert view and there will be simpler views that you can work with if you're not comfortable with all of these things. Across the top here, we've got some other options for views of our finished map. There's the preview and the height map. So if we want to just see the actual height map that's being created, the contour map giving us these lines uh, which indicate the height or the, the steps in changes in height. Uh, the biome map, so we could just turn off everything and just see the shape of our biomes. So biomaps that possibly is where it references the cities or uh, towns. Now this could also be for things like industrial um, and uh, downtown, but I'm not completely sure on that. Uh, the flatness map, I'm not really sure exactly what that would be. Perhaps that's without the um, mountains or without stamps being added. And then the gradient map, that could possibly be a 3D representation. Here's a look at the list of some of the commands that are available that you can add while creating your map. Just have a quick scan through those. You can pause that and have a read fully at your own leisure. So there are some other things that I know about the Terragon system. It will support stamps. And here's an example of a pretty large crater, which I know a few of you will enjoy using. And we saw the Monument Valley Hills earlier on. There's some testing going on of a serpentine system you can see here. So it looks like a path that's been cut into the side by people either walking or um, people that have dug it out to make it easy to get up a steep hill. It's something that would happen in real life and this could be quite useful. I don't know exactly how that system is going to work, but it's interesting to see. Now, what's this one all about here? Well, this this is Pilly's thumbnail from his Discord that he's converted into a biome map. So if you wanted to, you could import a picture and get the software to convert that to a biome map for you just for a bit of fun. And I think it's quite nice to see a developer having a bit of fun like that. So the Terragon software will feature an alert for when there's an update available. So it lets you know so you can make sure that you are always up to date. So before I let you know about the release date, here is some footage of the software in use. Now, the original video doesn't contain any audio, so you're not missing anything, me talking over the top.
So we can see there that generate world has been clicked and the software has been initiated and it's created a flat height map, which has only taken a second. And now it's creating the first noise height map. It's added a Gaussian blur to that. It's sort of the next height map and it's updated the preview. And you can see there's the basic start of some mountain areas. So now another noise height map's been, been created, which is, I guess, is giving it some texture to the rest of the ground. Preview's been updated to show that. There we go. So we can see some variety in the ground level, if you like. And now it's creating a river. So if you're not a fan of rivers, obviously you'd be able to turn this off. You can see it's done a basic river system, which has followed the shape of the terrain. And it started from the center of the map and worked its way out to the edges. There's another river doing the same sort of thing, heading off to the side of the map. There's our water layer has been added. And there's the radiation area for the border of the map. As the biomes have been placed, they look really good. I mentioned earlier about the biomes and that I would come back to it. And there's something that, which is briefly mentioned in the, the chats that I've had with Pilly, uh, and it's that you can set the heights that you want particular biomes to appear. So if you look at the picture here, you can see that the ground level, if you like, has been set to be a snow biome. But then as it goes a bit higher on the right hand side in particular, you can see it's going to burn forests. But on the left hand side of the screen, we've got what could be the uh, pine forest. And after that, uh, perhaps another burned biome, which is uh, indicated by that burnt tree. So I'm thinking if you can specify the heights that biomes appear, you could specify that the ground level is say perhaps the pine forest. And as you start getting higher, it goes to maybe a desert texture or it goes to the burnt forest or it goes to the wasteland or whatever you want to use. And then up to a snow level on the top. And if, from a role playing point of view, you could have it so that in the mountains, it was safer because you're up out of the way, but on the ground, it was the wasteland. And uh, it just gives you quite a few options and it's, it'll be a nice feature to see. And I can't wait to experiment with it. So there's everything I've got on Terragon at the moment. I think it's looking fantastic. It's got so much potential. I think Pilly has done a great job, particularly getting everything up to date since Alpha 20 just came out roughly one month ago. And of course, I'll keep you up to date with any developments on the software as I hear any news myself. So what about that release date? Well, Pilly is estimating that he should have it done for March or April very roughly March or April, we should get our hands on possibly an alpha or beta version of this software. And I can't wait to try it out. And I can't wait for you to all try it out. And let me see exactly what you do with it as well. Thanks again for watching. Please give the like button a little click before you go. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and visit my channel if you want to see other similar videos. I've done some videos on King Gen. I know it's a little bit out of date now, but there's still some things that you can learn and have fun with there. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.